Hi, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life. Today, I've got the lovely Sarah Morell with me. Now, she is co-founder of By Sarah, a really lovely skincare brand that I've been trying out recently and loving. She has a career spanning over 15 years in the beauty and well-being industry, including roles at L'Oreal and Estee Lauder and Unilever. And she has a wealth of knowledge of skincare and skin function. She's also studying nutritional sciences at university and passionately believes in sharing her knowledge to help those with sensitive skin find comfort and healing. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Nikki. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you. I want to kick off because you have got an amazing story. Tell us how you ended up launching a skincare brand. Yeah. Uh, well, by Sarah uh, is has come from a very personal place. So skincare by Sarah is made for sensitive skin. And that's born from our founding story. So my younger sister, um, my co-founder, Lauren, was diagnosed with a really aggressive form of blood cancer, uh, which is called acute myeloid leukemia. And that happened in 2012, completely overnight. She was fit, healthy, uh, no family history. And just overnight, uh, she was taken into hospital. She had been experiencing some symptoms um, like neck ache, uh, fever symptoms, uh, initially uh, sort of disregarded uh, by the, the um, GP. And then ultimately they, she was taken into hospital and chemotherapy began overnight. Um, and she was kept in protective isolation for six weeks period at a time, couldn't leave her room at all. Um, and it was a very intense time for us as a family. Um, unfortunately, chemotherapy didn't work. So Lauren then went through total body irradiation, which is, again is a very intensive form of cancer treatment. Um, and then ultimately a stem cell transplant and uh, fortunately, I was a match for Lauren, um, and there really is only a one in four chance that a sibling would be a match. So we were uh, very much going through that journey together as sisters, and it was a miracle that I could save Lauren's life, and she su successfully had that stem cell transplant. But it was at that time when I was working in the industry, as you mentioned, for big organizations like Estee Lauder and L'Oreal. And I had already an intimate knowledge of skincare products and skincare. And so I would go to um, shops on the high street and bring skincare into the hospital for Lauren, because at the time, a consequence of going through all that treatment was that her skin had become so delicate, so fragile, so sore. At times it was so dry that it was sort of shed away like a snake. It was very uncomfortable. And the only real option at the time was a, a, a quite a heavy duty steroid cream. So I was going to look for other alternatives that Lauren could enjoy and she would react to everything. Uh, she really couldn't tolerate any skincare. And previously she had her, her new young, healthy, plump, beautiful skin, was using lots of skincare and um, wasn't able to use anything at all. So the seeds of by Sarah were born then when initially with no intention of setting up a business or a brand, I sat at the kitchen table and started developing skincare formulas for my sister Lauren to help her and to help her skin and to help her feel more comfortable and take away some of that discomfort, that redness, that itchiness, um, and sometimes quite painful uh, uh, discomfort. Um, and so as Lauren got better, um, and recovered, uh, I still was developing these formulas at home, very much humble beginnings at the kitchen table and developed a real passion for it and really took on uh, a lot of self-study to learn more about ingredients that really restore and nurture the skin, um, as well as how ingredients are sourced and where they come from and how they're grown. Um, and the very first product I developed was the Hero Facial Oil. Uh, at by Sarah, which is today one of our best sellers and was the first product that Lauren could ever tolerate. Uh, so it led to the development of other skincare products within our range where today, fast forward many years, uh, we are running the business together as sisters with a beautiful range of skincare using clinically proven ingredients, uh, which is really important, and we're also dermatologically approved for sensitive skin. So we've come a long way since the kitchen table, but very humble beginnings. 
you certainly have and it's 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 an amazing amazing start uh, of your journeys together and the lovely that you're running this to, together as sisters that's really uh, amazing um tell us what um, i'm going to move on to really to to what a lot of the listeners and viewers might be thinking um because as we go through hormonal changes as women um our skin really does change doesn't it so from the, you talked about that youthful uh appearance and being able to tolerate most things to then you know uh lauren not being able to tolerate them because she'd obviously gone through um such radical treatment but also that our hormone changes affect our, our skin health as well so tell tell us what take us through the perimenopause journey and beyond and and just fill us in on what happens to our skin um through that stage and kind of why yeah, it's um, it's a it's a journey that we'll all go on as women, and you know when we're in our uh, early twenties, thirties, we have very youthful, plump, uh, healthy skin typically, um, and everything uh, is is working well from a sort of a skin function point of view. You know, we're able to retain moisture, we're producing collagen, but as we age, and particularly as we enter perimenopause and menopause it's essentially the skin's structural integrity that's impacted the most. And it's impacted in two ways. So firstly, it's due to a decline in estrogen throughout the body. Those estrogen levels decline. And in turn, it means that our skin cells in the epidermis just aren't reproducing and replicating as fast. So then our skin will become dry. It will feel quite thin. We also have a decline in testosterone, which then in can increase sebum levels. So you might find that your skin either becomes very oily prone due to those changes in testosterone, or your skin becomes very dry due to those estrogen levels declining, which typically accounts for around 50 to 70% of women at menopause. Mm -hmm. So skin feeling dry is very, very common. And it's those sex changes uh, within the body, those those um, fluctuations that are causing those changes in the skin. And we'll also see that, as the research shows, loss of barrier function, um, transepidermal water loss, not being able to retain moisture. Those are also changes we'll see within the skin during this time as a consequence of what's happening within within the body. So, it, yeah, it. It also speaks to uh, a time when we might be experiencing different lifestyle changes. So not only are we contending with hormonal changes inside the body, but we might be uh, experiencing differences in our sleep. We might be eating differently. Uh, we might be uh, getting less movement, more movement. And those constant changes, again, are influencing the skin. And our skin is impacted not only by what we eat, how we sleep, it's affected by external aggressors. So things like free radicals, UV rays. Um, and, and what we see is during that time of perimenopause and menopause, with those different changes, and I'm sure we'll come back to lifestyle and, and food and, and, and other factors that can influence the skin later, but when our skin's antioxidant def defenses are lowered, so they're not as strong as they can be, then we're more susceptible to skin damage, skin inflammation. And rosacea is a great example of an inflammatory skin condition where the antioxidant defenses inside the body have been weakened. And so these inflammatory neuropeptides are triggered, they're activated, and that creates this redness in the skin, this flushing within the skin. So it's very typical that, and we certainly see this at Bicera, that customers that come to us that are on this perimenopause and menopausal journey are experiencing rosacea or eczema for the very first time don't know how it's happened. Um, and it can be due to a number of reasons. And sometimes it is simply due to those fluctuations in hormones, but sometimes there are other factors where it requires looking a little bit deeper and it might be gut dysbiosis, it might be lack of sleep, it might be lack of movement, it might be insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. And we know, that, of course, that sugar is the wrinkle monster. Uh, sugar really accelerates aging. So there are many factors that can contribute to changes in the skin during this time. But ultimately, there will be noticeable changes as a consequence of those estrogen levels, those testosterone levels reducing over time. 
And we know that collagen typically depletes around 30% in the first five years during menopause. So it's always looking for ways to replenish from within by food, for example, and then using skincare where each of those ingredients has been scientifically proven to deliver a skin health benefit. Oh, yeah. And I love the fact that you've mentioned the the other things because it's not just about putting lovely products on your skin. It's all about that inner health and it, because skin is your detoxification organ, isn't it? And it's going to reflect how healthy you are on the inside. So really, really important. How, why does, why are we looking for skincare to be as natural and nourishing as it can be at this stage? Like I said, we can, we can probably tolerate all kinds of stuff in our youth, but what makes us less tolerant to traditional kind of skincare ingredients as we get older? Yeah, it's a great question. And essentially, because of those changes that the skin is going through and the body is going through, if you're experiencing dry skin, oily skin, you may also be experiencing a weakened skin barrier. So whereas previously, say in your early 20s, you're able to tolerate some of those really potent actives, where the skin barrier can become weakened, compromise, it's less tolerant. So typically we'll say avoid synthetic fragrances in skincare, even essential oils. And although essential oils are natural, they still can irritate uh, the skin. So we tend to say, if you can look out for synthetic fragrance and essential oils, try to avoid those, try to also avoid sulfates that can be very, very irritating on the skin. Parabens is another one. Um, and certainly the research has shown there is strong data behind an accumulative use of parabens in skincare. So use over a long period of time consistently mm. can lead to uh, an accumulation in the outer layer of the skin, which can influence skin cell signaling and the way that skin cells behave. So we tend to say avoid parabens if you can as well, but there are some fantastic ingredients. And so in terms of what to avoid, that, that's typically what we say, but actually there are some fantastic and really beautiful ingredients to look for. And we, at Bicera, we turn to the plant world for those nourishing and very restorative ingredients, as I did in the very, very early days when I was looking for a solution to help my sister's skin that had been ravaged by this cancer treatment. It was so fragile, so sensitive, and she really needed something very restorative. Um, and I think many years ago, natural skincare had had a bit of a bad rep in terms of its efficacy. Uh, but what's so exciting today is we've got all the data, all the science, and that's where I spend a lot of my time day to day is delving into the data and really looking at the science. And a great example of that is an ingredient called bacuchiol. Um, So we perhaps have heard of retinoids and retinols in skincare. Um, they're very, very potent ingredients. Um, and when used correctly, can have some skin benefits. But when overused or used incorrectly, particularly if you have a weakened skin barrier, can do more harm than good. So we started at Bicera to have a look at what might be a retinol alternative for skin that is feeling sensitive, might be going through rosacea flare and eczema flare, and we found the Kuchel. And what's so exciting is that through the data uh, that we were looking into around the Bacuchel that we use in our Bacuchel booster, this particular Bacuchel was put through a study, a third party clinical study and compared to retinol. And compared to retinol showed that our Bacuchel was able to produce 25% more type one collagen than retinol with zero irritation and without any dryness. So it just goes to show that natural ingredients can be so, so powerful. They do go hand in hand with synthetic ingredients where we're not able to source them from nature, or perhaps it's not very sustainable. And at Bicera, we're a B Corp. So being uh, very aware and conscious of how those ingredients are provided. Um, but I would say looking again to the natural world to provide those antioxidant properties. We were speaking about what happens when your antioxidant defenses are weakened. It's all then about antioxidant ingredients that can provide uh, more support for the skin. And ingredients like Bacucho is a fantastic alternative to retinol. Vitamin C is another one. And again, at Bicera, we haven't 
followed uh, the pack and uh, created a vitamin C that is typically very conventional uh, because vitamin C is another potent ingredient and it can irritate sensitive skin. So we went away and had a look at what might be an alternative and we found an alternative which is oil soluble. It's not ascorbic acid. It's uh, another oil soluble derivative that we use um, and it's very gentle on sensitive skin. So it means that sensitive skin can still enjoy all the benefits of antioxidant skincare, but without that risk of irritation and dryness and without feeling left out because we certainly have a lot of empathy at Bicera for those customers that are really struggling with sensitive skin and often feel that the only solution is a white clinical sterile product that actually makes you feel even worse, that you sort of want to hide away in your cupboards. Um, and the joy of being able to use a beautiful product, very sensorial product, that actually has fantastic ingredients that benefits the health of your skin is such a joy. And particularly when you're going through any life change, but particularly perimenopause and menopause, where there are so many things happening and changing within the body, um, that being able to reach for a skincare product that brings you so much joy each day, I think is just a wonderful, a wonderful thing to have. Mm, certainly is. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about what, we, apart from skincare, what can we do during this time that will improve the way our skin looks that um, from the inside out? Yeah, there are many things. Um, and stu studying uh, functional medicine at the moment, um, it's, it's so, so exciting to see what data is available to us. Um, very many studies that really clearly demonstrate that if we pay attention to our food, um, our movement, our sleep, our general well-being, we will feel so much better. Um, and starting with food, as I've just spoken about their vitamin C within skincare and Bakuchio, turning to the plant world for our food is equally as nourishing and equally as important. Um, and at Bicera, we're using ingredients like pumpkin seed and sweet almonds and apricot. And those are ingredients and foods that when consumed also have a real benefit on the health of your skin. So food is really important. We've spoken about sugar and the wrinkle monster and, and sugar is, is, is over time having a lot of sugar, particularly sort of processed sugars, uh, ultra processed foods um, can really damage the health of our skin that weaken that skin barrier even further. Uh, it's that sort of that effect that that uh, sugar has on um, collagen and forcing our, our skin cells sort of become rigid and stick together and that causes wrinkles. Um, and then it's, it's gut health that is also so important. So any gut dysbiosis, um, any inflammation in the gut, any leaky gut, again, influences skin change and skin behavior. There's a lot of research that points to the link between eczema, for example, and gut health and rosacea and, and gut health. Um, so certainly thinking about your food, um, movement is equally as important. Um, movement helping to uh, really stimulate lymphatic flow around the body, clear out those toxins, which helps the skin do its job most effectively. Uh, sleep. Sleep is so important because it's when our body enters cell renewal and repair. And I think it's the most wonderful time to take a moment for yourself before you go to sleep to enjoy your skincare, perhaps engage in a little sleep ritual um, with some meditation or some light music, something that really starts to settle your system into a deeply relaxing state so you can have a good night's sleep. Um, and then finally, I would say SPF and sunscreen, um, because UV rays are there throughout the year. They don't sort of take a seasonal hiatus. I mean, it's raining outside today, but I've got UV rays penetrating through the glass windows. Um, so even on a cloudy day, even on a rainy day, wearing your sunscreen, because again, the data shows that that accumulative effect of not wearing a sunscreen over time can damage the skin DNA and it can ultimately increase your risk of skin cancers. Um, and I read recently that 32% of UK adults rarely or never 
wear a sunscreen um, and a by Sarah we're launching a sunscreen very imminently and it's certainly our mission to uh, advocate year round sun protection so just building that into your daily routine as a daily habit a bit like brushing your teeth you wake up in the morning you complete your your morning skincare routine pop your SPF on go out and enjoy your day but wearing sunscreen year round is so so important and when you say put your SPF sunscreen on, do you t- are you talking about like sun cream in a bottle, or are you talking about like specific moisturisers with it in, or um, would you is it always separate? How how does that look for you? Yeah, it's a great question. I would suggest always going for a separate sunscreen and treating it very um, separate to your skincare routine. So your skincare routine is all about. Um, prepping the skin for the day ahead and giving it uh, those antioxidant properties that it's going to need to fend off environmental aggressors when we're out and about, things like pollution, for example, and UV rays. But a separate sunscreen is a bit like the final layer when you step outside and you pop on your coat or you pop on your shoes and keeping it quite separate because the data shows that the effects against some protection if you're going for sort of an all-in-one SPF and moisturizer aren't really there or what we see is that you're not typically using enough so separate sunscreen and what you're going to need is an amount that's roughly the length of your two first fingers for the face and the neck so that's quite a good way of remembering how much to apply and then just getting into that daily habit of wearing it every single day. But you can wear it under your makeup, can't, can't you? Absolutely. A lot of people yeah. want to want to kind of put makeup on top of that, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Pop on uh, before any makeup and reapply throughout the day if you are spending time outdoors. Uh, I wouldn't be worried about popping over makeup if you are outdoors um, and perhaps you haven't got a chance to to re-cleanse and, and, and prep the skin again. It's just getting that sun protection in every day. But if you are spending time outdoors uh, or even if you work outdoors, I would typically recommend reapplying every two to three hours. And what's and tell us about your skin routine. I always want to know what people do themselves. <laughs> so what, what's your skincare routine every day? So currently my routine is uh, starting with our balancer cream cleanser. So this is what I'll do this evening is I will uh, prep my skin starting with our creamy cleanser. And I love our creamy cleanser because again, when you're thinking about different cleansers and what to look for, I always suggest steering clear of foaming cleansers. They can be very drying on the skin. So if you're already experiencing quite dry skin or mature skin, then go for a nourishing creamy cleanser. Our balancer has a dual function of not only cleansing, but moisturizing at the same time. And we're using ingredients like niacinamide, which again, the research shows that niacinamide helps increase ceramide levels in the skin. So keeping our skin hydrated and plump. So I'll start with the cleanser. And I love this step. It's like producing a beautiful canvas before you add all your products that follow. So you have this clean canvas to work with. Do you just use your hands or do you use a face cloth or how does that work? I'll uh, use a a creamy cleanser uh, with some water. So I'm using my hands just to massage that into the face and neck, rinsing away. You can use a facial cloth if you want to. Sometimes I might if I've been into London on the tubes and I feel as though I've been in quite a sticky and high pollution environment and I really want to to cleanse the skin uh, well. So I'll I'll use a cloth as well. Um, My next step is hydration. So I absolutely love, I've got one here on my desk because I use it all the time. This is our Reviver Hydrating Mist. And this I will use as the second step after cleansing to replenish cell moisture. Um, And this is not fancy water. This is not just any old mist. Uh, We use, rather than water, we use soothing aloe vera, which is perfect for sensitive skin um, and very hydrating. And we also use prebiotic inulin which is all about helping the uh, supporting the health of your skin microbiome, your skin flora. Then I will either use um, one of our facial oils, like our Hero facial oil, uh, followed by our Bakuchiol booster in the evenings. Um, 
or I will use our ally recovery facial oil if my skin is feeling a little bit blemish prone. Um, so at times of the month in particular, uh, where my skin is feeling a little bit hormonal uh, and prone to breakouts around the chin, um, then I'll reach for our ally recovery fa facial oil rather than quite a heavy duty spot uh, zapping uh, cream or product, um, I reach for, again, the world of plants. I reach for our ally facial oil to help rebalance, which uses uh, rebalancing hemp, papaya seeds, jojoba. So it's very gentle, very rebalancing. And uh, we actually had a fantastic customer review that came in just the other day where she had said that she was so impressed with the results of the ally that it worked better than Roaccutane. So that that really oh. goes to show the power of plants. <laughs> no, that's good to hear because uh, it, it can be quite tricky, that, um, that stuff. So amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's been really, really enlightening. And um, I would recommend everybody try the by Sarah products. I've got the, the cleanser, the mist, which is lovely. And uh, I'm loving the facial oil because at my age, my skin gets very dry and it's a really nice, feels like a real nourishing treatment at night. Mm -hmm. And you very kindly offered everybody in my community a little discount as well. So if you wanted to try the by Sarah products, um, if you enter Nikki 20 at checkout, so that's N-I-C-K-I 20, I'll put the code underneath as well. Um, you'll get a lovely 20% discount. So uh Enjoy everyone. Thanks again, Sarah. Uh, really lovely to speak with you. And um, tell us, oh, just pop your, just tell us where people can find you. Yeah, absolutely. So you'll find us at bysarahlondon.com or on Instagram at bysarahlondon. And thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. You take care. Thank you. Bye.